Yeah, we are. And you've all been sending in your videos. We've got different standards, different ages as well. So let's go to the first one now. So we've got Rohan. What do you reckon? Well, very good, I think. First of all, it's nice to see Rohan practicing hitting the ball. We've had quite a few clips in over the years of defensive shots, so it's quite nice to see someone actually practicing hitting the ball in the air. I like that position as well Rohan gets into. It's quite a solid base. The moment you tell a youngster to hit the ball, it's amazing how they lift their head, yeah. they lose their base. You know, we're just hearing about heroes. The heroes of Rohan will probably be getting a base. Butler, Stokes, De Villiers, Gale, they're not lifting their head at all. That is a pretty good start. I'd say the only thing is be careful I see this a lot in a net people hit the ball and it's a catchable height just make sure it's not caught while you're shouting great shot there's a fielder there what about as well because we see this with a lot of the clips that get sent in the balance between like bowling machine and someone throwing it in the same area over and over again and actually that variety where you're not sure where it's going to come what's the right balance I think this is the right balance to start with train the brain to hit the ball yeah hundreds of ball hitting hitting do you know what as a county pro myself because at Essex, Peter Edwards used to bill Keith Fletcher for a cricket ball. <laughs> Not that I could hit it into the river, but when Graham Gooch hit it into the river, he got a bill for it. <laughs> so we didn't really learn to hit the ball. You watch them now, range hitting, they all hit the ball into the stands. So he's not going to be able to hit the ball in stands, but you make a good point. Train the brain first, then mix it up so he's got it in the locker. Right, what about young Dante? This is good because Dante is out in the middle batting. What do you reckon? Dante pretty good, picks the bat up pretty well, favours the leg side, gets that leg out the way, opens up the offside as well. Has a split grip that I've noticed, there's the leg side that Dante favours, but that is a pretty good start and keeps the head down, gets a solid base. What do you think about the split grip? Because we have seen it a little bit. We've seen it, uh, Sam Robson had it in Test yeah. Match Cricket, Faf Duplessis has it. Why do you think they have a split grip? A lot of youngsters have it. Well, uh, that's the one thing you've got to try and work out because generally you want to have your hands together so they work together as a team, these hands, not one doing that and working against each other. What you've got to work out with kids, I think, is, is the bat too heavy? So sometimes everyone wants to get to a wooden bat, a cricket ball, pads on, all of that. But when they're really young, we're not sure how old Dante is, actually there's nothing wrong with using plastic balls, plastic bats, stuff like that. So they can get the correct technique and the right way to do it. But you're right, Faf de Plessis people, they did bat like that, but that is the exception rather than the rule. The other thing is that that's just after that sort of age of Dante. They'll go from quick cricket or dynamos cricket with plastic bats and balls where you have to favour the leg side. It bounces up. The quick cricket balls bounce yeah. up. Then you play hard ball cricket. And what happens to a lot of the young boys and girls, they are still trying to play those sort of horizontal bat shots yeah. when actually a ball will bounce lower. And that's when you have to play like a cover drive. For the first time, probably, the coach is saying a cover drive. And that's when it becomes hard to play the cover drive with a split grip. That's when your hands have to just go slightly closer together so you can play the cover drive. Right, let's have a look. Here we go. We've got young Piers. Now, Piers is having a family net, and he looks pretty good, actually. He hits the ball pretty well, finds the middle of the bat. I think he's got his sons bowling at him. You can hear the sound of it. The one thing, though, Nas, and again, you see this with a lot of kids when they're starting out to play the game. They might be a little bit shy. They might be a little bit worried about getting hurt. They just start going leg side. How do you stop that? Well, Piers looks like he's had a bit of history in the past there with a short pitch ball in the nets. He seems to be a little bit leg side of it, a little bit worried. You could put a few cones down there behind how you do that with your daughter. Just put a load of cones because kids, some of them actually like do it to open up the offside. They feel like they're a bit closer to the ball. So they're not doing it because they're scared. They do it to open up the offside. But putting a chair or cones, obviously don't get them falling over the chair, health and safety, but put something behind them. Right, OK, so that's Piers. What about now for you, Dooley? We have young Jack. What do you reckon about Jack? Yeah, I like, uh, I like the look of this. The first thing I will say about Jack and his run-up, to me, one of the great things about kids, and what I always say about kids, why is it that when you're asked to run a 100-metre run or a 50-metre sprint, you actually run quite normally? But you put a cricket ball in a kid's hand, a boy or a girl, and they're all over the place and they're running mm. their hands going like this. It is a very simple thing. When you run in, keep your hands beside your side and run like a sprinter. So if you look at a good sprinter, you run exactly like that, really nice. The other great thing about young Jack is his head. 
the head is so crucial. It weighs quite a lot, some more than others, I can tell you that much. But if your head's always going at the target, then your body weight is always following through as well. You, if your head goes this way, something has to go this way to keep you balanced. So if you keep your head nice and forward and at the target, that's one of the big keys. So that's the two things I really like about Jack's uh, delivery there. The run-up with his arms beside his side and his head moving forward. The run-up's so important. I'm just going to jump in here, Keezy, quickly we do. The run-up's so important. Even Anderson and Broad are still channeling their running. Yep. They're, they're speaking to experts about it. How do you find out how far you should run if you're a seam bowler? Well, don't don't practice. I, I, I like to say don't practice on an actual pitch. If you want to feel comfortable, go to the middle of the ground, draw a line, and start. And run until you feel comfortable. You're not going to run a ridiculous amount of time, but just run until you feel comfortable, get into your delivery stride, and do it. And practice from a line that is in the middle of nowhere. So you're not using a crease and some stumps so you think you can start a step and then get there. Start from a line, run up, feel comfortable, bowl. Practice from that line and continue it, then measure it out afterwards. Right, OK, now let's have a look at some fielding. We've got a brilliant slip catch. This is right up my street, NASA. Well, because of the relaxed nature. I mean, this could have been you in a test match cricket standing at slip. The only thing that's missing is your mate Flintoff next to you and you two waffling on. I mean, that is relaxed. What about the keeper as well? You talk it just about footwork. Him, it sends him a little bit of a dummy. But he's caught it well. That's all that counts in the end. You know, that's made his day. Hands on hips. <laughs> and you catch the ball absolutely perfect there. Nothing wrong with that at all. The one thing on a serious note with catching, especially slip catching as well, being relaxed, all right, that might be a bit too relaxed, <laughs> but being relaxed is quite important, isn't it? It is, and you see some of the great slip fielders, you know, both of them used to just stand there like that. Yeah. You're not like that. If you, the moment you go like that, the moment you get too static, you get tense, in my opinion, and you see them like that, and then it bounces off. And that's why I think you have to be in a fairly relaxed. You take the mick out of me in my Mark War. Mark War was the <laughs> he best. Did stand like he, that. Mark War did stand like that. Honestly, he standing with his knees together. You, brought, you take the mick, but that's exactly how he did it. He could catch the ball by the sides. He was so relaxed. His hands were just so soft. It was absolutely brilliant. One of the other things as well with catching, there's no right or wrong way to do it. Whether your fingers are up, it obviously depends on where the ball goes or whether you keep your fingers down. But the one thing, when people end up going like this, this elbow, if this sort of gets up here, which a lot of people look to do, it just closes that area. So make sure that stays in there. So if you're not someone who does that, keep this elbow tucked in down there and that will mean that you've got more gap or more area to catch uh, and the sorry ball and from. another thing at an even younger age if you chuck us that tennis ball eventually not now that's what eventually means all right. all right they have crocodile hands they go like a crocodile and catch like that <laughs> when you're trying to get your hands like this low there and then the aussies went high like that so don't go crocodile hands because you'll get it on the end of the poppadoms <laughs> Right, OK. Uh, now we have Aaron. Now, I reckon Aaron has a pretty good technique. What about you, Nas? Perfect. Probably the best we've seen in two years as a batsman without upsetting all the others. But that looks absolutely ideal. Dad or coach is trying round the wicket. I like that because obviously it's a different angle and you're going to get some left armers come in there. But that looks technically absolutely perfect, to be honest. So I reckon, is it Aaron? Aaron, yeah. Is it, I reckon for Aaron, actually, what he doesn't need from us is anything technical. Probably what he needs from his coach, his dad, and watching how to build an innings. So there'll be some very gifted players out there. You've got to take it from that level to how do I get 100? How do I get a big score? How do I sit on their best bowler and wait for the fifth bowler? At his level, there'll still be a fifth bowler comes on, yeah. and he's chipped it in the air against their best bowler for 30 and then he sees others come on and get smashed, and he's sitting in the dressing room go, you know, I could have got some more there today. It's about getting the score. The other thing as well, because we were all fairly decent young kids when we were playing, and what happens when you, you get to this sort of level, generally spinners are people, they run up and they sort of bow and they give you one bad ball and over, so you don't have to think too much about spin, because spin's a hard art, especially someone to rip it. And then if you're lucky enough and you start playing second team or a decent standard of club cricket and you get the old timer who just comes on and puts it on a length over and over again on a slow pitch, how do you actually start training now for that? How do you start learning a proper defensive game for men round the bat for spin? Well, first thing I say to that, the amount of schoolboy and schoolgirl cricket I've seen where a spinner will come on, bowl a low full toss, and you hit it straight up in the air because yeah. you haven't practiced it in a low full toss or a long up. You've been a bit overcoached and the long foot, the full toss and long up hasn't featured for you. So practice hitting it for six. The second thing I would say is coping with not scoring for a while. 
Yeah. Men round the bat, people, women, girls round the bat, people around the bat, and you're under pressure, there's a bit of chirp, and realising that for two overs, that spinner, that old-time club spinner who's been over a lot of people for years <laughs> is going to be all over you, and a realisation that eventually it'll get easier. What about this, Frederick? I used to love doing this. You used to do it in the dressing room, didn't we? Well, we need someone to come in. So get your mates, get someone, you have someone to throw. We've got a few tennis balls here. I'm just going to get nasty. You bring in your short leg and you just sort of play and you've got to try and bat. And imagine there is men round the bat. Even if you're in a net, get to the worst part of the net and just throw it into the rough. Well played. Thanks. You're going to spin any. And the two things to that drill, get, just get some more balls there, Keezy. Two things to that drill is practice front foot and back foot. Don't just play the same shot. So you can play virtually the same ball. You can go forward, same ball again. Don't bowl the leg beat. And then get your mum or your dad and your sister. Give them some catching practice. Will has obviously left his hands behind. Good catch, Will. Give them, bring them into the game as well. That makes it a fun drill. Never take fun out of your drills. Good catching, Will. Well done, Will. Best you've ever done. Right, OK, Dylan. Let's have a look at Dylan. Uh, bit of short pitch bowling here, Ness. I think this is important. As you go up through the ranks, you are going to get some short pitch bowling. So I'm really pleased that Coach Dad has got him practising. Some will say... Don't give me any, I'm a bit worried. That's a proper bouncer. I think that's what the ring is there for as a target. The only thing I'd say about Dylan, and we are going to be a little bit more critical this season, I have to say, is that Dylan slightly takes their bat behind him. Now, with any technique, I always say exaggerate it to prove a point. So he's here. I'm exaggerating. If it's here, then you're blocked off. So show me, chuck us the ball, Keezy. So the ball's here, chuck it at my hip. You can't, your hands get in the way, your hip gets in the way. Whereas if you're slightly more open, that hip and everything yeah. gets out of the way. Get, don't get this bat locked in behind you. One of the things that we argue about, just a little bit, is the bat lift. And if I play this again, you can just see he doesn't really lift his bat up at all. And that, I think, becomes hard to go anywhere with the pull shot. Because you imagine his bat's going to go up. And when you're facing pace, that's not easy to do. Can he have a bit more of a bat lift? A bit more. We, can all, we always ruck about this. You like it slightly higher. Yeah. I like it slightly lower. But you're right. If your hands are here wafting around high and the ball is there, I don't hit the cart, then you're <laughs> in a perfect position. From here, you have to go up and you run out of time. Yeah, just experiment with these things, and that's the best thing about it as a coach. Just tell him, try and get your hands up a little bit higher when you go to play. If it doesn't work, scrap it. You don't have to do it. That's pretty good anyway. OK, who we got now? Freddie. We've got a bit of batting and bowling from Freddie. Let's have a look at the batting. Uh, what do you reckon about this? Now? Freddie, very good. Again, that bat's out towards Gully. Yeah. which I like. It's not round behind him. And if you look at the two cover drives, he pulls the last cover drive, this one. Look at that for a position. The only thing I would say is the bent front knee. Your knee is a bit locked like that, which means you could chip it up in the air. If you can bend your front knee into the drive, you'll keep it along the ground. But that is an excellent position. And one thing I like about what he does, and you were talking about this the other day with Kane Williamson, he looks very loose in his hands. Yeah. He's not gripping the bat too yeah. tight or anything. Yeah. And actually, that's where your timing can come from. Uh, right, let's have a look. Dooley, now we've got Freddie, the bowler. Yeah, Freddie here with his bowling. We're going to look side on. Now, look, from behind, I want to get this rolled again from behind. And I'm going to stop this after we've seen the little bit of outdoor footage of Freddie taking a wicket at club cricket as well. Well, have a look at that footage from behind because there are a couple of little things that I see with Freddie that I'd just like to talk about. And when we roll it just a little bit further forward, have a look at the head and have a look at where his left arm is. Now, he's looking through the left-hand side of his left arm. And if we roll it right through, watch how he runs on the pitch. Just watch how he runs straight down the middle of the pitch because he cannot get around his front leg. He cannot get around his landing leg. So one of the things with that, if we come out, we take a sort of a bit of a look. Freddie's looking through here. I don't like that. As soon as you start looking through here, your head goes this way. What I'd really like to see... Can you hold my mic? Just hold it there. What I'd really like to see is Freddie more looking through this side. So what happens if you're looking through this side? Your head and everything can come a little bit more forward, and then you can get this leg around and get off the pitch a little bit more. So if he's going like this, the body goes this way, he's got to stay. Something has to balance him. As soon as your head goes this way, your feet and everything are going to come through here. You can't get around that front leg. So I really like bowlers to be looking through here more and then getting their head more down the line. So that would be the one thing I'd say about Freddie's bowling. Thanks, Wardy, for that. Just have a look at this. See that head? That head goes away and then he... 
He cannot get around that bowling leg, and it goes straight down the middle of the pitch. We've seen a few issues with uh, Ollie Robinson, haven't yeah, we? Yeah. With that very same thing, and I've talked about him getting a little bit too much there, and that back foot getting too much there, and he can't get around the front. So that's one of the issues with Freddie that I think could be improved. Sort that front arm out, look a little bit more inside, and keep your head going forward. Right, let's have a look. We've got Levi, age six. I like the look of him. Absolutely. Again, hitting the ball, solid base. Got a bit of a little Joss Butler bend <laughs> of the knees that's come in in the last few years. Leg out the way to open up the leg side. That's the one you've got to be careful because in a game, there are fielders. It's a classic example of you hitting it well, but that's better. I'm not saying hit it on the ground, but either hit it on the ground or really take the aerial route. These kids get so disappointed when they get out in a game and they play the perfect shot and you get caught cover or something like that. So don't be afraid to really take the aerial route. Right, someone slightly older. He's not, or he's around the county setup, I think. He's part of Ebony's ace programme. Again, looks a decent player with a decent technique. Looks a very good player. Looks very organised. Slightly the hands go out away from the body there. Just out away, so you'd want slightly the thing we did on Williamson the other day of keeping your hands tight, but Can bending the front knee into the drive, absolutely perfect. Very organised. Just silly things like taking times between deliveries on the bowling machine. You're not just there. People sometimes just practice for the sake of it. That looks like practice with purpose. That's good practice. The only thing I would say, and this is one thing a lot of people have got to keep an eye on now, often people go slightly open in the stance. Don't mind that, especially in club cricket when you get... Uh, caught in that position there so you can just open a bit and you end up and you're perfectly in line but you've got to be careful when you do that and you see this at times from international batsmen as well where your hips just get a little bit too open with your shoulders as well and when your hips end up starting open look what happens to my bat my hands everything it all comes around so you can have a slightly open stance but try not to get too chest on so you see this right shoulder because what it ends up doing is it brings that in that's when the bat comes across so you can have it in that position but just try and keep those hips slightly more in line not too open because it takes your hands and everything else out and the right shoulder comes in right nasa last one we talk about fast pitch bowling, stuff like that, because a lot of these guys, like Aaron, they're going to start facing quicker bowlers. What's the best way to deal with that? What's the mindset? The mindset is not to turn up. You'll often turn up, boys and girls turn up, and they often talk about the quickest player in the opposition. I've heard it in schoolboy dressing room. Oh, they've got so-and-so, he bowls at 90 <laughs> miles. He doesn't bowl at 90 miles an hour, but they're often worried about it. So, A, don't look for that. B, have some drills in the nets to enjoy that. Now, come on, chuck us in. Will, come back in. Just to finish, a few short ball drills. <laughs> Just well, have right. a get in the net, fend it. All right, Keezy. And then just have a little hook. Well, no. <laughs> Caught short leg hooking. So just have a little hook, little in the net, have a bit of fun and enjoy yourself. <laughs>